Hello and welcome to the video. I'm here at 3DXR, sat with Ben of 3DXR, and this whole video is about RTK GPS. Now, RTK GPS is something that I get asked about a lot. It's not something that I use as a hobby grade flyer, but it's something that Ben deals with on a regular basis. Now, Holy Bro have just brought out some new technology, a new rover and a new base station GPS system. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity then, while I'm here and I have Ben's brain to make a video to kind of talk about what RTK is, how you use it, and to get Ben to give a little demo of how you set it up. So let's start at the very beginning. I'll put time codes down below and links to these bits and pieces on the 3DXR website. Let's talk about, first of all, what is RTK GPS, Ben? Okay, so RTK is the real-time kinematic correction. So in this setup here, what we need is a, a base and a rover and the base transmits corrections to the rover and we in this case can get sort of centimeter accuracy relative to the base um it's a very neat solution from hollybro here so the big did the big headlines with this is the reason that you'd use rtk gps is although you need two gps's one connected to a base station and then another one on the model is that you get sub two centimeter accuracy versus a couple of meters now if you're a hobby grade flyer having a return to home landing in more or less the same spot is absolutely fine. But there's lots of reasons why you might want that very accurate location, isn't there? Yeah, so there's um, sort of a, a couple of main uses we see for RTK. Um, for It can be used for navigation, um, or some people will use it for mapping. So what I must remember is that the accuracy is relative to what base you use. So if it's your own base, or if it is uh, end trip service um, and some benefits used for navigation would be uh, highly accurate repeatable sort of flight paths and um, improve your return to home accuracy so landing on the same spot and, and repeating a sort of pattern so RTK it would be a good use on a lawnmower where you want to precisely fly um, a grid to cut all your grass and you want to be able to repeat that a setup like this could be easily set up on your vehicle and also at your premises so you'd set up your fixed base and what we saw from our demonstration earlier is within seconds we had a RTK fix and we're receiving those corrections and our accuracy became sort of centimeter accurate relative to our base. So you would really use this if you're more of a professional flyer if you're using surveying mapping photogrammetry or you have a rover and you want it to maybe follow a very very specific path to kind of sub centimeter accuracy then this is exactly what you need to do now you mentioned a couple of things and this system needs two gps's not one doesn't it to work properly so what are the two parts that you need to get yeah what we've got here is the f9p family if you like so the big disc here is, uh, we call this a rover. This is what's on the, the moving vehicle. But although you call it a rover, it's not just for cars, is it? This no, no, is that's, the one that yeah, goes that's, on a um, plane, quad, it, whatever it is. Yeah, the term rover in this case is, you know, it's moving about. Right. Yeah. So, it, yeah, nothing to do with the vehicle. This is called uh, the rover. Some, you know, sometimes it could be a network rover, depending on how you connect. But yeah, this, this one's the, the rover, if you like. So on the vehicle, moving around. And then for this simple setup, we have the base. Um, for simplicity today, we just had the helical antenna. Quite often, if we were set up on a tripod or stuck to a wall, we might have a bigger um, antenna. Um, if it's a permanent installation, you would use some sort of waterproof antenna stuck to the side of a building or on a vehicle. Um, but yeah, we've got these... Um, two setups here so when we're when we're talking about gps we'll call it a rover and a base the base um is transmitting corrections to the rover um, and these gps's must also be capable of rtk so when you see sort of rtk ready what that means is it's got a, a gps chip inside so in this case it's a U Blox f9p that is capable of receiving corrections for the one on the rover and it's capable of acting as a base on the base station. So the other thing we need for this then, I'm guessing, is some kind of telemetry connection to the rover Absolutely. GPS so that you can send those corrections yeah. all the time. So something like these Holybro telemetry radios that we're yeah. using here is a perfect thing for that. Sim simplest option here, the 433 radios from Holybro, um, they are transmitting the correction from the base to the rover. Obviously there's many other radios you can go over, the RF designs, you can send it over 
the links like heel link so a way to get that correction from the base to the rover so what rtk is then is it is a much more accurate fix but all the fix is relative to the base station so the base station lock can be up to a couple of meters but then the relative position of the flying part or the rover or the quad or wherever it is to the base station is kind of sub centimeter accurate once you've got it all set up properly so what we'll do is let's just quickly walk outside and ben can go through the process to quickly put this all together so here we've got our demo set up in order to show the rtk uh, correction going to our F9P rover. So on our demo board we've got a flight controller with the F9P rover plugged in and it has a telemetry radio which is connected to this laptop where we're going to set up the base. So in order to start transmitting corrections we need a base correct connected to this laptop. So here we have the Hollybro F9P helical and we're going to connect it via USB to the laptop. The RTK settings are found in Setup, Optional Hardware, RTK, GPS. We we'll select the COM port for the base, in this case COM34. It's a F9P, so we'll tick the UBlox Auto Config and also this additional box. It's going to survey in for, two, for one minute to an accuracy of two meters. Now this is the relative accuracy of the base, so let's connect. And what we have here is the green bars have appeared showing the different satellites we're connected to. And the bar is an indication of sort of signal to noise ratio. So we're gonna start um, surveying in in order to get a valid base position. So here we've got uh, GPS, GLONASS, BDU, Galileo, and we'll start collecting a base position. On the right, this is the duration of the survey in. So seven seconds. This current accuracy is in meters and that's the, the sort of relative accuracy of the base. Once it's achieved this sub two meter um, accuracy and over 60 seconds has passed, we can save and use this position. So it's just about to hit the sub two meter, which it has now. And in order for the position to be valid, we must have also satisfied the time requirement of 60 seconds, which is coming up. And then we now have a valid base position, so we can save the current base position. We'll just call it test. And now we can use this position to start transmitting corrections. So I've clicked on use. And if we go back to the main screen and connect to our vehicle, COM32. When it's established a connection, it's now going to be able to start transmitting the corrections and what we should see the normal 3D fix change to a float and then an RTK fix. Depending on the hardware you're using, this could take seconds or minutes. So let's have enough. We've got an RTK float, which is good, and now instantly RTK fix. So we are now using um, RTK, it's a fixed position. We've got an accuracy to a centimeter accuracy to our base and our base is sort of relatively accurate to a couple of meters. So this is now using RTK. The message you saw before that where it said RTK float, that's where it's receiving corrections but it hasn't calculated a solution. These F9Ps are very good GPS and it's very quick to attain an RTK fix. That was seconds in this case. So. Ben, thanks for doing the demo. I now understand how to use this stuff. There are a couple of things to think about because it does mean that if you have this system, you don't just immediately get sub-centimetre accuracy. First of all is to remind everybody that the, the centimetre accuracy is between the base station and the vehicle once it's all set up and calibrated because the corrections are being sent. So it's really important that the base station, you know the position 
absolutely accurately. So if you're stood on, on, on OS survey points, that's going to help. But there are professional systems and other things you can do in order so that you know exactly where the base station is. It does mean, though, if you have the base station in the same position every time when you fly, you can do those repeatable flights to within a very, very tight margin. So whereas with a normal model, you could be within a couple of meters if you're flying the same mission over and over again, if you're mapping, that might not be what you need. So by using this and having the base station in the same location, you can get that reproducibility. However, there are a couple of other things. You were talking about the fact that if you stick this system on something that's going at a pretty quick pace, you also could lose some uh, yeah, resolution. So I guess that touches on the, the mapping side. So quite a lot of time people want to improve the accuracy of geotagged imagery taken on a drone. Um, for mapping um, so you can do that by RTK so that that will absolutely improve um, the the geo information that you collect in flight and um, there's another method called PPK which is to post process the data and the reason why you might wish to do it that way is to try and get the best position of where that photograph was taken so if you imagine a fixed wing mapping drone traveling at 20 meters a second and we're to look at sources of error this rtk system here operates at 5 hertz when it's receiving a correction and what happens is during the time between readings the planes actually move four meters in this case right so when when was the picture taken um how, how do you get centimeter accuracy if every reading is essentially four meters apart by logging the gps data and post-processing that that's one step to improve the data so you'll interpolate the position other methods so we'll just lightly touch on this on this video for people that want to improve the mapping accuracy um we, we've mentioned in previous videos about the hot shoe feedback so exactly when the picture was taken and then things to consider such as the position between the camera and the antenna so often there's an offset there of more than the desired accuracy so of dialing course, these figures in a, a really big model and the camera's hanging off the nose and the gps is out the back out the yeah. way then potentially it could be a meter so the position can be out yeah. by that of course um another thing that can happen say let's say for example surveying a large area with a fixed wing the antenna on the vehicle as you bank over you'll lose satellites and you could potentially lose the rtk fix so it could drop down to a float or a standard fix. So my preference when doing large area fixed wing mapping would be the PPK approach. So post-processing the data to get the best results on multi-rotor flights, lower speed, gentler turns. Yeah, RTK is a very nice way to do it. Nice and simple. Um, there is another use of RTK and um, it's a sort of, I guess, growing issue for some people on certain vehicles where, you know, the compass doesn't perform very well. So we can actually put two of these, for example, a helical one on an aircraft. And because we've got such a um, accurate position of where these GPSs are, we can use that for heading. So if we know where two points are, okay. yeah. So let's say they need to be a minimum 30, 40 centimeters apart, the bigger the better. Um, and that's sufficient enough to give a heading so we can use gps for your and eliminate compasses on aircraft where that has been challenging you know due to interference the run of cables size of the motors so a very good use of these um hollybro f9ps is to be used for as, as um heading um that can be with a base on the ground or there's also a technique where you have a moving base right. so one of the gps's on the aircraft is actually the base but it's moving and then the rover's been corrected so it's yeah it's it's been out for a little while but um that that's an option for people that are struggling with large aircraft and compass issues so hopefully that's helped those of you that were trying to figure out what rtk gps is so it is a way to go from a couple of meter accuracy which is what we'll get out of the regular gps's we use in the hobby down to kind of sub to one centimeter accuracy but again remember that the accuracy that we're talking about here with rtk is relative to the base station so if the base station is moved or in a different location that accuracy is going to change as well so you kind of have to survey in almost your base station if you want to know on an os grid exactly where that piece of information that photograph was taken and it isn't the complete answer for fast moving vehicles and for real precision 
there is something called PPK that you may have to do, which is post processing, which is where you can take all the information from the flight, all the correction data, all the information from the log files, and actually create a very, very accurate view of how everything worked. So hopefully that's helped. If you have any questions, do pop them down below. And if we get enough of them, we may even do another video going into this in a little bit more depth. Thanks to Ben for the time today. Thank you. And I'll put again, links down below to all this stuff on his website. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.